a special welcome to you. Thank you for joining us. And remember that at any time during the service today, you can click the request prayer button. And our prayer host will actually bring you into a private chat room where you can share whatever is on your heart today and you can be prayed for very personally. And also, if you're online today, please write your name in the chat window and let us know that you're here. And today, if you've never done it before, I want you to do it today and uh, build a little community online if you're with us today uh, streaming. Also, I want to say that uh, I was completely shocked and surprised and blessed by uh, last Sunday. I want to thank the congregation again for that beautiful time. And uh, I, I only just got to op start reopening cards, the many cards that I received yesterday. Lisa and I were sitting on the couch and just opening those and just feeling so blessed and grateful. Uh, I love St. John's. I love being your pastor. Thank you for the last 21 years. It's been a true blessing. Let's take a moment now to settle our hearts and to invite the Holy Spirit to come and to, to, to prepare us to receive uh, what God has for us this morning. This is a time that we've set aside to worship and to reconnect with God and to allow him to work in our hearts. This has been a beautiful week. It's been a hard week. It's been a difficult week. It's been a challenging week. But it's also God's week. And as we come into this next season we invite the power of the Holy Spirit to guide and direct us. And so I'm going to invite Leah to come, our Director of Student Ministries, to lead us in the call to worship and our opening prayer. Good morning, everyone. Please join me as we read from Psalm 40. I waited patiently for the Lord to help me, and the Lord turned to me and heard my cry. God lifted me out of the pit of despair and set my feet on solid ground. I've been given a new song to sing, a hymn of praise to our God. I have told all your people about your justice. I have not been afraid to speak out. I will not keep the good news hidden in my heart. I will talk about your faithfulness and saving power. Please pray with me in the opening prayer. Living God, whether we are waiting for you in the pit of despair or in a place of peace and joy today, whether we come full of faith or filled with questions, meet us here. Give us a new song to sing, new reasons to follow, and a fresh boldness to speak of your faithfulness and saving power. In the unity of the Spirit, through Jesus Christ our Lord, we pray. Amen. Hey, we're really blessed this morning to welcome our praise leader this morning, Gabriel Ponton, and uh, I've had a chance to get to know him, actually, the last couple of weeks, and so Gabriel, welcome, and thank you for leading us this morning. Well, good morning, and welcome to worship. Um, yeah, as Pastor Steve said, I'm Gabriel Ponton, and it's very nice to, to be here. As I was getting ready, uh, I have the, the privilege of leading us in worship for the next three weeks, and as I was getting ready for this morning, it just kind of, I was reminded of the fact that we already have such a shared connection um, that we already have deep bonds, uh, even we, though we may have never met before, um, because we have this unity in Christ. And um, as, I, as a, a, a profound theologian once said, that the, the water is thicker than blood. The, the idea of uh, the baptismal waters being what unites us as a family. So let's stand up and worship together um, as we sing to the God of the universe. It's falling from the clouds, a strange and lovely sound. I hear it in the thunder and the rain. It's ringing in the skies like cannons in the night. The music of the universe plays. We're singing, you are holy, great and mighty. The moon and the stars declare who you are, and I'm so unworthy, but still you love me forever. My heart will sing of how great you are. The 
the song of galaxies we sing together oh it's beautiful and free the song of galaxies is reaching far beyond the milky way so let's join in with the sound come on let's sing it out as the music of the universe plays we're singing you are holy great and mighty the moon and the stars declare who you are and i'm so unworthy but still you love me forever my heart will sing of you all glory honor power is yours amen all glory honor power is yours amen all glory honor power is yours forever amen we need to sing that again let's sing that again all glory, all glory, honor, power is yours, amen. Yes, all glory, honor, power is yours, amen. All glory, honor, power is yours forever, amen. As we sing, you are holy, great and mighty. The moon and the stars declare who you are. And I'm so unworthy, but still you love me forever. My heart will sing of you because you are holy. You're great and mighty. The moon and the stars declare who you are. And I'm so unworthy, but still you love me forever. My heart will sing of how great you are. You are. Amen. We're going to hear now these words uh, from the book of Psalms uh, as I read them. The earth is the Lord's and everything in it, the world and all who live in it. He founded it upon the seas and established it on the waters. Who may ascend the hill of the Lord? Who may stand in his holy place? The one who has clean hands and a pure heart who does not lift up their soul to an idol or swear by what is false. They will receive blessing from the Lord and vindication from God, their Savior. Such is the generation of those who seek him, who seek your face, O God of Jacob. Father God, you are worthy of all our praise. God, even if you did nothing for us, you would be worthy of all our praise. But as it is, you emptied yourself and you made yourself a servant, God, that we would be able to be reconciled to you and that through the Holy Spirit we could join in the reconciling work of the kingdom. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Holy, holy is he. We sing a new song it's on heaven's mercy seat. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Yeah. With all creation I sing praise to the King of kings. You are my everything. And I will adore you. Hallelujah. Clothed in rainbows. Oh, you're clothed in rainbows of living color. Flashes of lightning, rolls of thunder. 
blessing and honor, strength and glory and power be to you, the only wise King. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Yeah, with all creation I sing praise to the King of Kings. You are my everything, and I will adore you. take time to adore the Lord. Whether you feel like praying out loud, whether you feel like praying in your heart, whether you feel like kneeling or sitting or standing or walking around, would you just praise the Lord right now? God, we praise you. We thank you and we adore you. We lift you up above all other names. Jesus, our only hope, our rock and salvation. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be song together as we continue to worship. And it, the song is called Jesus, We Love You. And I would love to just teach us the chorus really quick so we can all sing it together when we come back to it. And it's just a song about pouring out our adoration for the Messiah. So this is how the chorus goes. Jesus, we love you. worship together with this new song. Oh, the old things have passed away. Your love has stayed the same. Your constant grace remains the cornerstone. Things that we thought were dead are breathing in life again. You cause your sun to shine on darkest nights. For all that you've done, we will pour out our love. This will be our anthem song. Jesus, we love you. Oh, how we love you. You are the one our, our hearts adore. Let's 
sing that again together. Jesus, we love you. Jesus, we love you. Oh, how we love. Oh, how we love you. Yes, you are the one. Our, our hearts adore. The hopeless have found their hope. The orphans now a home and all that was lost has found its place in you you lift our weary heads and you make us strong instead and you took these rags and made us beautiful you've done we will pour out our love this will be our anthem song jesus we love you oh how we love you as you are the one our, our hearts adore our hearts God, we praise you and we worship you. And even in darkest nights, Lord, we come to you. God, we come to you with our weaknesses. We come to you with our fears, knowing that you accept us as we are, but you will not leave us there because you have created us. In the image of God, you created us. Holy Spirit, would you sustain us? Would you open up our ears and our hearts as we listen to you this morning? in the powerful name of Jesus the Messiah. Amen. Can we sing this part just one more time? Our affections and devotions poured out on the feet of Jesus. I always think about the woman who poured, washed Jesus' feet with her tears and wiped his feet with her hair as we come to the Savior and pray this. Our affections, our devotion poured out on the feet of Jesus, our affection, our devotion, poured out on the feet of Jesus. Amen. You may be seated. Oh, sorry, that's a church squat. Uh, we're going to stand up and greet the person next to each other, next to you. Uh, go ahead and find someone new if you haven't met someone in the church yet, and greet them with the peace of with the peace of Christ.
Welcome back. Hello, hello. It's me, Leah. Hi, Abraham. Oh, my gosh. Hi, everyone. Ooh, I'm seeing faces I haven't seen since last week. Welcome back. So good to see you guys. Uh, I have the privilege of talking to your faces about Rooted. So for those of you who don't know, I am in charge of student ministries. My name is Leah Bolton, and this is my second Rooted update. The first one, semi-unhelpful. I had been here for five seconds, so I had no updates for you other than we had a pool party at the Christoviches. So, once again, Kathy, thank you. Um, but I have more exciting updates for you because we finished our Sherman series, Sherman series, and we're starting a new one tonight, and we've already had multiple events. So, before I give you a recap, I'm going to have us think futuristic because this Friday is very important, and Miss Nancy gave me the look before she left, so we're going to start with that one. Um, <laughs> so this Friday is Family Fun Night Fall Edition. So for those of you who don't know, we have a nursery school. I know. Um, so we are partnering with the nursery school to have a children's ministry nursery school extravaganza. So this Friday, we are going to have a barbecue. We're going to have pumpkins galore, like all the games are pumpkin-themed. Um, we're in charge of that. That's why I get to say that. Uh, we're having, we're watching Coco. Pastor C's not excited, but I know every other person with a child under the age of eight is very excited. Um, and lots of candy. One of the biggest things, the reason I am saying all this, A, we need donations. So we need candy. We need, we're doing potluck style, so we need sides and desserts. I will have a beautiful little card table out on the patio afterwards please come talk to me and sign up. I love to talk, but I also love seeing your little signatures with like, I'll bring this. So please join me on the patio. And that's not 6.30 to 8.30, uh, oops, 5.30 to 8.30, because we'll have dinner, give the preschoolers time to play games, digest, fall asleep during the movie. We have a plan. So this is costume encouraged, but not required. There is a chance I will show up as a Christmas tree because Christmas is better. Um, but anyway, so this is what's happening on Friday. Please join me outside underneath the fig tree. Back to Rooted. So we did a thing called Wisdom. That was our sermon series. It was great. We were talking about the difference between earthly advice and God's wisdom in the end. And the way we went through that is we had a hobbit party because that made sense to celebrate Bilbo and um, Frodo's birthdays. So we got to have a feast. We made all the food in the kitchen. The kids were spectacular. They wore their elf ears the entire time. Um, and then we had the big day. None of the Ackmans are here, which is incredibly disappointing because I guess they created this event a couple of years ago and they were like, Leah, it's the big day. How do you not know? Either way, I made them eat a giant cupcake. We did an escape room and we played a bunch of games. So we have had a lot of amazing opportunities to get to know each other over the last few weeks, and I've been incredibly grateful. So as we're moving out of wisdom and out of these very random seeming events, we're moving into holiday season and a new series called SIFT. So how do we sift through life's obstacles, life's moments to find God's goodness, to find God's truth within that. So it's kind of a jumping off point from our wisdom series. So be praying for us. This series specifically is all about asking hard questions. Our group is very good at that. And so I'm excited to have very pointed questions for them as we sift through the life, through the worldview lens of the gospel. Be praying for us. But now we have to pray. Bye, everyone. All right. Will you join me in prayer this morning? Loving God, thank you for the gifts of this day, beginning with the gift of life and breath. Help us, Lord, now to bring our attention and awareness in close to the inner temple of the Holy Spirit who resides within us and where we can identify the gift of your breath for each of us today. As we raise a hand over our chest, Lord, remind us you are here, nearer than our breath, meeting us in this time of worship. 
You alone know the days of our lives. You are creator and sustainer of all life. You are our good shepherd. And because this is so, we have everything we need in you. Lead us in this time of gathering together and thank you for the gifts of being your people. We pray for our church and for our leaders on this day of celebrating your work in and through the ministry of St. John's. Help us to see your good plan and purposes as we reflect on the year behind us and as we discern our way forward together. Help us to celebrate with joy all you have done and are doing. Speak to us through our processes together so that we might continue to discern our gifts for your ministry and give us the grace to live them out. Help us to live out our mission of joining Christ on the road and pointing travelers to the way. Lord, we bring our burdens to you this morning, trusting you with all that weighs us down. Hear our personal prayers as we seek your help in the private needs in our lives. Lord, we seek you for our friends who are suffering with illness, loss, broken relationships, and life stressors. Lord, hear now our prayers for our friends and dear ones as we speak them, both silently or name them out loud. Lord, continue to transform us into people filled with your grace and truth so that we can accompany each other through difficult seasons, holding tight to you. Lord, we are so daily disturbed by news and events outside of our immediate circles of experience and influence. Thank you for making us a people who feel and care and are burdened by the suffering of our neighbors and fellow travelers near and far whose names we do not even know. Attune our hearts so that we can pray, so that we can seek you and allow your compassion to grow within us. We pray for Ukraine and Russia for peace and an end to war and suffering. We pray for your presence in the darkness to bring your light of hope, comfort, and healing. Wherever war and violence reigns, God, we ask for your intervention. Lord, we grieve and are overwhelmed by the images and stories of natural disaster and pray for our brothers and sisters in the wake of such devastation and loss. Lord, hear our prayers for Florida, Pakistan, and every area of the globe hit by disasters that change life in such shocking and overwhelming ways. Lord, we thank you for all the good news we also hear and see in countless acts of compassion, generosity, hospitality, and sacrifice. Help us to hear your call for us personally today, to hear and see your invitation to be a light and to use every resource you have given us to glorify you with our lives. And hear us now as we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Christ has come and sets us free. Sing and praise him, sing and praise him. Worthy of our praise is he. Gracious God, thank you again for this time of worship today. It's uh, set apart to, to hear you, to sing to you, to pray to you, to seek your face, to receive what you have for, this, for, for us this morning and for this week. Lord, you know what's in our hearts. You know our questions. You know our struggles. You know our challenges. And we pray, Lord, that you would uh, put a highlighter across the word this morning, that you would show us the things that we need to hear. Give us some fresh bread today. Give us the strength and the power that we need, Lord, to serve you and to seek you and to declare you in Jesus' name. 
Amen. So I'm continuing a series on, on the book of Revelation, if you're here for the first time. And I just met someone new today who uh, doesn't speak a lot of English, and she gave me the sign of the cross, and she just wanted to make sure, is this a place where we can worship? And it was so beautiful, and I welcomed her in. Woon is, is some here, or around here somewhere, but uh, so grateful that people are finding uh, Jesus, you know, in this place and in this city. And this morning I want to talk about Witness. One of the most uncomfortable words, I think, for us as Christians today in the modern world, we're not quite sure how to do it. We're not quite sure how to represent Jesus well on a daily basis in a world in which there's literally a salad bar of religions and philosophies all around us. And we just get this feeling that folks are just not really that interested in what we have to say or, uh, or even want to, to get into the deep questions that maybe we as, as God's people want to talk about, what's important, what's deeply meaningful, what's the purpose of life. And, uh, and yet, in my own experience, when I get to know people and build relationships, I find that we as human beings have a lot of the common same questions, a lot of the same struggles, and that Jesus has incredibly good news for us. So this morning we're going to turn to Revelation 10 to 11 where there's another dramatic pause between the sounding of the sixth trumpet and the final trumpet that will announce Christ's return. And we'll notice in the book of Revelation that John cycles back again and again. So we're not always repeating everything that John says here in these messages because he, he does repeat. And so you and your small groups will get to go into some of these passages in more detail. But if we've ever wondered, is it really that important that I stutter out God's word in my daily conversations with people who would rather hear almost anything else, I think Revelation 10 and 11 leaves no doubt about the answer to that question or what is given for the task. So I want to begin by asking us to think about the strength we're given to witness, to bear witness to Christ. Let's read chapters 10 verses 1 to 7 where we really kind of understand here that the witness does not underestimate the power of the simple gospel. And I saw another mighty angel coming down from heaven, wrapped in a cloud, with a rainbow over his head. His face was like the sun, and his legs were like pillars of fire. He held a little scroll open in his hand, and setting his right foot on the sea and his left foot on the land, he gave a great shout like a lion roaring. And when he shouted, the seven thunders sounded. And then the angel raised his right hand to heaven and swore by him who lives forever and ever, who created heaven and what is in it, the earth and what is in it, and the sea and what is in it. There will be no more delay. But in the days when the seventh angel is to blow his trumpet, the mystery of God will be fulfilled as he announced to his servants the prophets. Now, there's a lot there, and if you're here for the very first time, uh, it's a lot to take in. But I want you to take, take in, in particular, in this passage, if, if you're here for the first time, this image of this little scroll, this mighty angel and this little tiny scroll. So John sees this angel, literally a, a messenger, like nothing we're used to seeing. This is no chubby little uh, winged baby fluttering through the air. Uh, this is this mighty angel with one foot on the land, one foot in the sea, and he's coming down from heaven. His face is like the sun. His legs are like pillars of fire and one foot on the sea, and I say, and the other foot on the land. And as I said, you know, if John was alive today, he would have been a movie producer or he, you know, he had an incredible, vivid, prophetic, spirit-filled imagination. And he, God employs all of that as he's, as he's sharing this truth about the Christ who is his and it was and who is to come. And in this mighty angel's hand, as I say, there is this little bitty scroll. It's so small that later on, John's going to be able to put it in his mouth. So big angel, really big, tiny little scroll. The scroll is the gospel of Jesus Christ. The scroll is the gospel of Jesus Christ. You know, the Bible and its message may look pretty unimpressive. It may look very small, something that you can easily ignore, unimpressive. 
It's a book about the same size and shape as any other book, right? And yet, it has an incredible power. And anyone who's read this book can testify to what it does to you when you start to read it. I love uh, what a correspondent, Tabitha Soren, said about the Bible. She said, no matter how secular our culture becomes, it will remain drenched in the Bible. She said, since we will be haunted by the Bible, even if we don't know it, doesn't it make sense to, sense to at least read it? We should read the Bible. You know, folks come to this country, and that's one of the things they would like to do, is maybe read the Bible. or any other. The Bible is a universal book, but the Bible tells us a lot about who we are. I'm thinking about Dostoevsky. You know, the Russians are getting a lot of bad press in this country, but they did an amazing amount of good writing, and I'm sure they still do. Uh, Dostoevsky was one of my favorites, and this great Russian novelist said this. He said, we have never truly breathed air nor seen light until we have breathed in the God-inspired Bible and seen the world in the Bible's light. Wow. We've never truly breathed in air or light until we've breathed in the God-inspired Bible and have seen the world in the Bible's light. I'll never forget the day that I first... uh, heard someone preach on the Gospel of John. I was only 11 years old. I was sitting in my dad's church. Dr. Louis Evans Sr. was standing there reading the first few chapters of John's Gospel, and something happened to me in that moment. And I suddenly had this new and different understanding of who Jesus was. I knew Jesus, but uh, the Word made flesh, and it grabbed me, and I had a hunger to read the Bible. I can't explain it. It came from nowhere. I hadn't read the Bible before that, and now all of a sudden I had a hunger to read the Bible, and uh, I've seen that happen over and over again. The word grabbing hold of people, it's healing power, it's transforming power, it's power to remind us of the grace and the love of God in our lives. Let's go on to talk about the taste of witness. You know that little scroll, it's going to get eaten by somebody, so let's talk about the, the taste of witness in chapters 10, verses 8 through 10. The witness accepts the joy and the difficulty of discipleship to Jesus and of calling others to follow him. Let's read verse 8. Then the voice that I had heard from heaven spoke to me, saying, Go and take the scroll that is open in the hand of the angel who is standing on the sea and on the land. And so I went to the angel, and I told him to give me the little scroll. And he said to me, Take it and eat. It will be bitter to your stomach but sweet as honey in your mouth. So I took the little scroll from the hand of the angel, and I ate it, and it was sweet as honey in my mouth, but when he had eaten it, my stomach was made bitter. Hmm. Interesting passage. So this mighty angel says to John, take it and eat. You know, before we can share the message of Jesus, before we can... uh, Speak that word to other people. It has to become part of us. And we know that when we eat, when we eat something, when we eat a, uh, a carrot or uh, we eat a, a piece of bread, it literally becomes a part of us. Our body digests it, the carbohydrates, the proteins, the fats become a part of our own bodies. When we eat the word of God, it becomes a part of us. And that's really what John is talking about here. Jesus says, one cannot live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God, as we read also in Deuteronomy 8.3. We have to eat the word. We have to chew on it. We have to digest it before we can share it with other people. The gospel is a simple message, but we can't share what we don't possess. And I just want to challenge us, first of all, to think about this question, have I ever really tried to digest this word? I know I've probably heard... Pastor Steve preached a few sermons from this book, but have I really taken some time to read it myself? Have I let it get into me on a daily basis? Have I spent time with the Word? Have I allowed it to seep into my DNA? And I just want to challenge you again, whether you're online or in person, come to church at least once a week, once a month. I want to challenge us, first of all, to, to be part of the community of God's people. To, to, to hear the word of God preached, yes, proclaimed, but also to take it upon ourselves to let the word of God into us 
on a daily basis. We need it. And that message is sweet because it's the message of God's undeserved grace and its liberating tr truth. It's the message of new life, eternal life. It's a message of reconciliation. Gabriel and I were talking about the powerful message of reconciliation in the scripture and how as we come into the community of God's people, this is a place of reconciliation and healing, or at least that's what it should be. But while the gospel is sweet to the taste, it can also be bitter to the stomach. It can give us indigestion. Have you ever had indigestion from some scripture that you've read? Ooh, wow. You know, it can, it can mess up our, our peaceful uh, coexistence sometimes, you know, with, with the status. You know, it, it can challenge us and, and, and cause us to, to walk in a completely different direction. Because while discipleship to Jesus is a joy, you know, it can also be really challenging. You know, two young college-age guys came to me in a single week to talk, and what they said to me in so many words was, I'm, I'm really feeling lost right now. I have done some things that I regret, and I, I really need some help. And there were some heavy-duty things that were shared. And they just needed a pastor, somebody that they didn't know personally, somebody they had no relationship with, somebody who could just listen. And boy, that is a gift, just listening to people. That is the first step in being a witness. And my heart was moved as I listened because I have to tell you, both of them were about the age I was when I was experiencing my own spiritual struggles. And so I could, I could relate to them out of a deep, true part of myself that the grace of God is real, that the love of God, his healing, his forgiveness is real. And I was able to share that and the hope of Christ, the hope that he brought to my life. I had digested that message in my own life. I had experienced that grace, and so I really could share it, you know, with someone else. That's a beautiful thing. When you've learned or heard or experienced something about the love, the, the truth, the grace, the power of Christ, and being able to share it. And I know we have, and I know we can. But let's talk about the time to witness. When do we do it? You know, the work of witness is a lifelong calling for every follower of Jesus. Let's begin in verse 11 again from chapter 10. Then they said to me, you must prophesy again about many peoples and nations and languages and kings, John is told. And I will grant my two witnesses authority to prophesy for 1,260 days wearing sackcloth. And these are the two olive trees and the two lampstands that stand before the Lord of the earth once again, we got a lot of imagery here. We can't unpack it all. But essentially, John is hearing this word to prophesy, to continue to speak the truth that he knows. And these two witnesses are images or representations of the church over the ages. So he hears this word, you must prophesy again. And John, I'm sure, again? Are you sure, Lord? We can imagine him saying that and Jesus saying, yep. I want you to do it again. But Lord, I told someone about Jesus at school once or twice. I let it leak that I was a Christian at work. I rarely fell asleep at church. I went to all the congregational meetings. Do I have to keep doing this? Do I have to keep representing Jesus? Didn't I build a house down in Mexico on a Mexico mission trip? Can't I retire and be a spiritual uh, consultant? But the Spirit just keeps on saying, no, I want you to do it again. I want you to continue to prophesy and, and to be and to embody and to live a Jesus-centered life. I want you to do it again. It's a beautiful thing to be reminded, and it's a, it's a tough thing to be reminded that we're always on call. That Jesus is asking us to represent him in all the places in which we live our lives. And sometimes that can be dangerous. When John talks about those two witnesses, the lampstands that can't be snuffed out, we're also being reminded of the tremendous sacrifice that's sometimes paid by Jesus' people when they speak out and they identify themselves as God's servants. It reminds me of Father Maximilian Kolbe, a priest who was imprisoned at Auschwitz. And when a, when a fellow prisoner, Fra Francis Gajanistek, um, was condemned to death because of a prisoner outbreak. Maximilian Kolbe said, 
let me die in place of this man. Let me die in place of this man. And they put him in a starvation bunker with nine other men. They were praying and singing that whole time. Eventually, because he wasn't dead yet, they gave him a lethal conduct, uh, injection. And today, if you go to that place, that, that's a shrine now. It's a place where people come to pray. It's a place where people come to remember the sacrificial love that Maximilian Kolbe showed for Francis and Jesus' faithfulness to us as we proclaim him, even in the most difficult circumstances. But you know, for many, it's not the fear of death that silences our witness, it's the fear of looking odd. It's the fear of looking strange. And what I've discovered is that being real is what counts. There's a, there's a wonderful couple on our street that works with athletes in action. And they moved in about, oh, I'd say seven or eight years ago. And they live on a cul-de-sac. And Lisa and the wife uh, in this family got to know each other really well because both of them had gone through breast cancer. Both of them recently. She had recently gone through breast cancer and Lisa a couple of years before that. But what really impressed me was that they, at one point in their journey, this is about three years ago, they hosted a party. They had got to know their children were playing together. They were getting to know their neighbors. And they hosted a party to celebrate her one year cancer free, one year being one year cancer free. And they had they invite all the neighbors to come over. And I have to tell you, it was such a powerful moment when this couple shared their story. They shared the difficulty of the, of the last year, scariness at times of the last year, uh, their own doubts. It was so real. They, they talked about their faith, and they did it in a way that was so real that anyone could have identified with their journey. And they also showed through their words and their actions the, the generosity of God's people and of their experience with Christ. And I was so touched by how someone could bear witness in such a beautiful and transparent and authentic way right in one's own neighborhood, simply by saying, this is my life. This has been really hard. This is how God has met me in the midst of these challenging times. Friends, our witness really begins as we take time to build relationships. That's where it starts. Or engage in matters of common interest, serving together in the community, sharing a hobby, a common struggle. And I want to ask you, where can that happen? Where do you see God doing something like that in your own life? Where do you see that opportunity to connect with someone who has a common burden that you can share together with them? Where do you see the opportunity to, to reveal in, in a natural way your love for them, your concern, your compassion, and in the midst of those very real conversations, the opportunity coming finally to say the source of your strength, the source of your hope, in Christ. I want you to pray about those people in your life. Because I know for each of us, there are those whom God wants to share his love with through us. I just want to say this finally about the point of witness. And we read in verse 15, Then the seventh angel blew his trumpet, and there were loud voices in heaven, saying, The kingdom of this world has become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Messiah, and he will reign forever and ever. And then God's temple in heaven was opened, and the ark of his covenant was seen within his temple, and there were flashes of lightning, rumblings, peals of thunder, an earthquake, heavy hail. Once again, the trumpet, the seventh trumpet, announcing the coming of Christ. John sees this vision of God's temple in heaven open, and the ark of God, a symbol of God's presence. So much there. But I was talking with a Jewish friend of mine, uh, this past week about Yom Kippur. And he was reminding me that on Yom Kippur, they blow the shofar, they blow the trumpet to celebrate the end of the days of awe. 
the days of repentance. And he was saying, you know, he asked me, he loves to ask me questions as a rabbi. He's like, he's like a rabbi. He goes, why do we blow the shofar? And I'm like, Joseph, I don't know. Why do you blow the shofar? And he said, well, we blow the shofar because we are the instruments of God. And it reminds us that we are the instrument of God, and God blows his spirit through us out into the world. And I thought, Joseph, I believe that too. <laughs> that is exactly, exactly what I believe. He blows his spirit right through us. We are God's instruments. He knows that we are dust, but he uses us. And, you know, blowing the shofar can be dangerous. Every time I try, I'm, I'm never exactly sure what's going to happen, but let me try. <laughs> Now, all right. That time it was too easy. You know, it's, it's kind of blowing my sermon illustration. But um, usually it's a lot harder. But maybe because of the pandemic and I was blowing it every night at 8 p.m. with my neighbors. I don't know. Maybe that's why it got easier. But the thing about blowing this shofar is that it, it can be hard. And I think being a, a, a witness to Christ in the same way. You know, it can feel awkward. It can feel strange. And sometimes we hit a a note that doesn't sound great, and we, uh, we feel like beginners. And I just want to encourage you to remember, you are an instrument of God. You're an instrument. Allow him to blow his spirit right through you, his message of grace and truth and love through Christ, who lived and died and rose again, the risen Lord, in whom we have the hope of life today, abundant, a life in which we bless and heal and bring grace and reconciliation wherever we go in his name, a life that's eternal, a life with him. Let's be God's instrument as we go from here and go out there in his name. Let's open our hearts, Lord, to your spirit today. Lord, come, come heal, come breathe your life into us once again as we seek to be your witnesses in the world. I want to invite you to be quiet now in this moment of silent prayer. Let's pray together. Gracious Father, you have spoken to me by your spirit through the Bible, prayer, the, gospel, the counsel of God, godly people, and the everyday events of my life. You've spoken the truth about your love for me, about the sin in my life that separates me from you and others, about my need to confess, be forgiven, and made whole. You've spoken to me about Jesus, your son, who came to show me how to live and what to live for. You bore the pain and the penalty of my sin when he died on the cross. You defeated evil and death when he rose again, who offers eternal life to all who trust in him. I believe this good news, Heavenly Father. Yet I confess that I'm often timid or fearful when it comes to sharing it with others. 
Forgive me, Lord, for keeping this life-giving message to myself. Fill me with your spirit that I might speak your word to others boldly. Let's say it boldly, lovingly, truthfully, intelligently, simply, humbly, patiently, authentically, joyfully, and faithfully as Jesus would if he were me. And all God's people said, amen. Now let's stand as we sing, come Christians join to sing. Our services are coming to a close. And then we have a beautiful little congregational meeting coming after, after the service. Let's stand and sing. We have a congregational meeting immediately after the service, literally, immediately after the service over in the fellowship hall. I invite you to be there. Also to remind you that you can be a part of a small group right now that continues to study this uh, book of Revelation with us on Sunday mornings. I want to invite you to consider the Peace and Global Witness offering once again that addresses systemic conflict and injustice both locally and around the world. You can find out more about that by going to our website and uh, looking up that Peace and Global Witness offering. Also, as always, thank you for the ways that you give of your life, your ministry, your talents, your love to St. John's, either right now in the service and ministry and, and in leadership and also the ways that you give financially to this church. God bless you as you do give. And now may the living Christ go with you. May he go behind you to encourage you, beside you to befriend you in obedient ministry, above you to watch over you, within you to give you power, and before you to show the way. And may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Amen.